From the tiniest ants to the mightiest galaxies, why do things work the way they do? If we imagine the universe as a giant puzzle, we already found some important pieces. Electromagnetism, gravity, tiny particles, and so on. But even with all this, we can't get the full picture. We still can't figure out how everything works. What we're trying to find is the theory of everything. This is the mysterious theory that should be able to fit everything in our world together. For years, brilliant minds like Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, and many others tried to derive this theory. But as you can imagine, it's not a simple task. Albert Einstein was one of the first to get very close to the answer. He spent his entire life watching and analyzing the world. As a result, he came up with his most famous equation, E equals mc squared. This equation tells us how energy and mass are connected. Energy can turn into matter and vice versa. But that's not enough. So he created his theories of relativity. One was called special gravity. It says nothing can go faster than light and time can stretch or shrink depending on how fast you're moving. Then he combined it with general relativity which introduced gravity into the equation. He thought of gravity as the universe's way of bending space and time. Just like a fabric stretches when you place a heavy ball on it, space-time stretches when we place things like planets in it. This effect is what we call gravity. Einstein also wanted to connect gravity with the other forces, like electricity and magnetism. That way, everything could be together in harmony, and there were scientists who decided to help him with that. Their names were Theodore Kaluza and Oscar Klein. In the 1920s, they decided that it would be cool to add extra dimensions to our universe. Electromagnetism explained how electricity and magnetism work together. And now, Einstein, Kaluza, and Klein wanted to add relativity to it, like mixing several flavors of ice cream to create a super delicious universe sundae. To make this wild idea work, Kaluza and Klein had to add a whole new dimension to our world. We usually think of our world as having three dimensions, like length, width, and height, plus time. But these scientists created the fifth dimension, although it's all tiny and hidden, so you couldn't spot it in your everyday life. All this gave us a more or less full picture of the world. Many even thought that Einstein did it, found the theory of everything. But if only things were that simple. Unfortunately, even though Einstein was a genius, he couldn't unite everything. You know what screwed things up for him? Quantum mechanics. Quantum world turned out to be insane. When we looked at the particles, we learned that they could do magical tricks. For example, they could be in two places at once, or disappear and reappear again out of nowhere. Einstein couldn't explain that. He wanted things to be logical and predictable, like knowing exactly where a particle is and how fast it's going. But quantum mechanics showed that our world is much more complicated, weird, and random than what we thought. But even though Einstein didn't explain absolutely everything, his legacy still lives on. Today, scientists are picking up where he left off. So how close have we gotten to the theory of everything since then? Well, quantum mechanics tried to nominate its candidate, string theory. This hero emerged in the 1980s. Quantum physics pals had a wild idea. What if the tiniest bits of everything in our world weren't particles, but super tiny strings? Yeah, like guitar strings. Almost. They look like little dots to us, which is why we see them as tiny particles. But if we looked at them under the best microscope ever, they would look like little loops. In that case, everything in the universe is made up of these little vibrating strings. Just like different notes on a guitar string make different sounds, these tiny strings can vibrate in different ways. And each way they vibrate creates a different particle. One note might give us a particle we call an electron. Another vibration could be a particle like a photon, and so on. But there is another cool idea that string theory suggests. It suggests that our universe has more than just the usual three dimensions we can see, like up, down, left, right, and forward and backwards. What if there are extra hidden dimensions that these strings can wiggle in? 
and theorists say that they might be up to 10 or even 11 of these dimensions. At first, everyone thought that this was it. This could be the theory of everything. But just like in the movies, when everyone thinks that they've defeated the villain, more problems pop up. String theory didn't fit the universe's rules discovered by Einstein. This is the last piece of the puzzle they've been trying to find for many years. If string theory supporters figure out how to connect their ideas with Einstein's theories of relativity, they'll finally be able to explain all the things ever. And they made some attempts. String theory began to divide into many branches. For example, it gave rise to the multiverse theory. All right, we know that all the tiny strings can vibrate and wrap in different ways. There are many ways for each string to vibrate. The combination of their vibrations give many possible results. And there are trillions upon trillions of these strings. And just like one musical note can help to create different harmonics and songs, strings can create different versions of the universe. Each version might represent a universe with its own set of physical laws and properties. You probably heard about the parallel worlds. Well, it's a real scientific concept. The multiverse theory says that our world isn't the only one. There's an infinite number of universes and their number is constantly growing. Let's say you're baking cookies. In one universe, you make chocolate chip cookies. In another universe, you make oatmeal raisin cookies. And yet in another universe, you make them with peanut butter. Even for such a small decision, there are a lot of parallel worlds. Something like this is very hard to even imagine. And these are only those universes that are similar to ours, where identical copies of us live. Some universes might be completely different. They might have different constants of nature, like the strength of gravity or the speed of light. They might have things that we can't even think about. Of course, this is just another theory. There's still a big debate about it in the world. It's a fascinating idea, but there's no way for us to test it with our current technologies. These universes, even if they exist, are way beyond our reach. One of them is called M-theory. It was proposed in the 90s by an awesome scientist, Edward Witten. M-theory is like a super advanced version of string theory. Just like in regular string theory, it suggests that everything in the universe is made up of tiny vibrating strings. But M-theory says that these strings aren't the only things out there. There are also things called brains, short for membranes. Imagine these brains like sheets or surfaces that exist in higher dimensions. We can't see them, but they can interact with the strings in interesting ways. M-theory was basically juggling other theories, trying to solve the problem in everything. It tried to unite every version of string theory into one big idea, and also combine all this with Einstein's ideas somehow. It also high-fived Stephen Hawking's ideas about black holes along the way. But even with M-theory, we're not at the finish line. No matter how hard we try, we still can't explain absolutely everything. The biggest problem is trying to unite relativity with quantum mechanics. So far, no one could do this. These were our attempts to come up with a theory of everything so far. Will we be able to derive it one day? Who knows? There are many tricky pieces still missing, but we keep learning and creating new tools to explore our world. And maybe one day, we'll finally find out the answer.